every morning I wake up, I'm just like so charged to see what it is that I'm gonna go see. I'm wondering when it is I'm gonna get tired of being on the bike, but I don't foresee it anytime soon. Going to a sleeping bear dunes. I also met beautiful people, really. The people camping next to me, a family, Brad, Trish, Ryan, and Jackie. They, they offered me dinner, made me dinner, and uh, I hung out with them this morning a little while. And eventually today I'd like to end up in Traverse City. I'm getting an early start, so I should be able to get there. is the city of Frankfurt with its many Victorian homes, marinas filled with boats of all types along Betsy Lake, and plenty to see down its main street. At the west end of Main Street, one can find Frankfurt's public beach with its light beige soft sand on the shore of Lake Michigan and its picturesque North Pier Lighthouse. I take a quick look around and quickly get back on scenic M22 Highway, heading northbound towards Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore. Miles, I reach Crystal Lake with more of this soft sand where I meet some triathletes training for their swimming leg of this endurance multi sport competition. I don't stay long as I have lots to see on this day and wanting to get to Traverse City by nightfall before the incoming rainy weather the next day. As a teenager, when I was uh, maybe 16, my best friend in high school, his parents had a house here in Frankfurt. So I came up here for several weeks to hang out and there's a lot of these places that I'm stopping by and recording that are in my memory bank of 30 years back or so. Pretty cool. It's like the turns on the road, the like Crystal Lake Beach and Frankfurt. Another few more miles northbound on M22 and I'm at Point Betsy Lighthouse where I send the drone out for a quick look. Again I make it a quick stop and keep on heading north towards Sleeping Bear Dunes. I gotta be so, so gentle with my small chain ring. Otherwise it'll slip like that. I can't do it with one hand. These M22 uh, hills, they can be very, very steep. I'm loving it because I feel strong, but I gotta be so focused on being smooth with my cadence. Otherwise my chain ring slips or my chain slips on the chain ring. Once again, I start having issues with my drivetrain. It all started eight days ago when I decided to change my chain after using it for about 7,000 miles. My cassette was the first to start failing while crossing Ohio a week ago and I was lucky and very thankful to have the Cyclist Connection Bike Shops crew in Canal Winchester, Ohio swap it out for a new one. But now I have my small chain ring skipping while climbing the few steep hills here in Michigan and making me have to use my large chain ring instead. 
So far it's all good, but soon enough I'll be climbing over 2,000 feet in elevation with some legit grade. Now that I'm on M22 for the second day, I can tell you that it's spectacular for cycling. The roads are in great shape. The shoulders are perfect. There's not that much traffic and it's the busiest time of the year. Not that you could be here in the winter or unless you're hard, hard, hard. Here. And this, this, this scenery is outstanding you're like in lush forest and clearly in the summertime it's still gonna have cooler than average tempers temperatures since you're so far north I just met this family and uh, they stopped to say hello to me. Hello. Now they're gonna be in one of my episodes. Safe <laughs> travel. See you guys. See ya. Bye. It's awesome. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> they scared the life out of me. I was listening to music and uh, I met them a little earlier. And uh, we chatted for a while, real sweet people. I don't even know their names, but maybe someday I will. <laughs> I ride easy miles past the town of Empire and stop to eat a peach and an apple at a roadside fruit stand before taking a left turn on M109 South Dune Highway and into Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore. I'm looking to ride up to Sleeping Bear Dunes Overlook on its pier stuck in scenic drive. Here's where not having my drivetrain working correctly got me into trouble. The climbing on this scenic drive ended up becoming quite the challenging task. I'm just never gonna leave Michigan. The summer is eating itself away between Pennsylvania and now Michigan. This is absurd how beautiful it is. About five minutes ago, I got a, a case of tachycardia, which is really rare for me. But I do get it like once or twice a year, and I, they, it goes away. And I got different methods I use to get rid of it. But I'm short of breath, and my heart is just going like that, not pumping any blood like it should. It's just fluttering. After about 15 minutes sitting by the roadside, I was able to get my atrial fibrillation under control by using a couple of different techniques I've learned from the past. Either way, I was a bit worn out from this episode and took a half hour at the overlook to recover while enjoying the beautiful scenery. From here, one can see the western tip of South Manitou Island and colorful Glen Lake. Check the weather forecast, 90% chance of rain and thunderstorms tomorrow. So I gotta get to Traverse City. And my atrial fib is uh, 
under control, so. Enough said. My small chain ring keeps slipping, so I'm not even using it. The best I got is my 46 out front, 34 in the rear. It comes a point where it doesn't go. Not with my legs. I need to get out of this park and get going to Traverse City. Hopefully that west wind will carry me there. Because I think I have 30 miles to go. And it's already past four. here I was hoping for for no more uphills my my body is like destroyed from cranking on just the big sprocket all right Traverse City let's see if I can figure that one out before dark there's a bike path there and they don't have a way to get back on the road I had to cross over there all right let's crank some Serious miles now, 28 miles to Traverse City. <sighs> uh, sandy trail here. I gotta be really careful not to fall. Almost dug that front end just now. Beautiful. I don't know about making it to Traverse City. I just got diverted to a dirt road. Had to walk it out. Without being able to use my small chain ring, I'm uh, useless. But it's just ridiculously beautiful. It makes me just want to stop right now, but I don't really want to stop. I'm enjoying too much of these afternoons. So I'm just going to keep going and see what happens. Figure it out later. It's, it's so quiet right now in here. It's just like an insane level of peace. This is when I tell myself because I'm kind of in a hurry and I think a lot of us who are bicycle touring feel this way because we're trying to get somewhere. So at the end of the day, you're like, so I, think, I feel I always battle the anxiety about finishing somewhere. Um, I try to chill out and enjoy it and I do, of course. I think you guys know that, but right now is when I tell myself, absorb it because this is like phenomenal. I just got thrown in the middle of a gorgeous trail, the sun's coming down, serious shadows all over the place, the smell, everything, it's just like a perfect moment right now. So I'm just gonna take a breath, go slow, and uh, enjoy. You gotta be so careful in some of these sections of this trail because there's sand collected in them and the wheel just wants to dig in and turn on you while sliding. Really hard to control other than forcefully maintaining your wheel straight with both hands. Pretty uh, entertaining. Next. With Burnham Sandy Road behind me, I start heading eastbound with a west wind helping me along. I still have 30 miles to cover to reach Traverse City with seemingly hilly country. 
I first passed by Sleepy Maple City where I see a small city park that tempted me to stop for the day but with a 90% chance to rain for the next day and needing to find a small chain ring I decided to power through and get there. I'm getting somewhere. I just climbed a big hill eastbound out of um, Maple City and uh, I can see across the bay there. I'm not, I can't even think right right now, I'm so tired. Anyways, uh, 60 more miles. I'm still at it. I think I got like 10 more miles to go. I think I'm doing good. A lot of fun riding right now. A lot of downhill, also uphill, but a lot, a lot more downhill so far. I've been climbing a long time now. First, a really long, long, low grade incline, and then a couple of big hill, bigger hills. Not big, but without my small chain ring, it's a disaster. <laughs> it's a lot of effort, which is good. It's like bench pressing heavier weights instead of lighter weights. So I think it'll be good for my legs, but. Boy, I'm like destroyed right now. I gotta figure out where to stay. I'm destroyed. But that downhill I just did, I was seeing wiggly lines. And I was worried that there were gonna be climbs, but there were drops. And it was one after the other. And they were steep and fun. I, recur I recorded some, but not all of them. That was uh, 20 miles, 1,200 feet of climbing with my big sprocket. And the one thing that saved me completely is that the wind was in my, on my back like the whole time. If it wasn't for the wind, I would have been like walking up those hills, all of them. And I walked some, like two or three. I, I just couldn't get to the top, so I just got off and walked it. Not too much, but enough to have to get off the bike. All right, I know there's no campgrounds here in Traverse City, but with the storm coming tomorrow, 90% chance of rain, it's going to be crappy. And I was going to take the day off anyways. I'm just going to find a, the least expensive, hopefully a motel somewhere in town and get major amounts of food. I'm so hungry. I'm going to eat everything. I catch my breath and start looking on my cell phone for inexpensive places to stay the night but quickly learn about how touristy Traverse City is and how expensive all I found online was. I decided to ride to the eastern end of town where I did my usual by stopping at a gas station and asking the clerk about motels in town. With some tips at hand I checked out a few places from the outside before deciding on one. The office was already closed so I found the phone number outside and called the motel's owner, Tom, in hopes of figuring something out for the night. Let's go see how much they want. And then haggle for a better price. What a day I've had. Insane. Totally insane. Atrial fib, fib and everything. I'm a low impact guy. I mean, is there any, anything we can work out? I'm, I, all I need is to rest and work on my bike at a bike shop tomorrow before I take off to the UP. And could, Do you recommend another motel I could check? I, I only like staying in motels. What about is, uh, what is it, Monday? I mean, 
I know it's not likely that you'll rent that for the next week until the weekend or so. So if tomorrow somebody calls you, let me know and I'll figure something else out so you can make your money. All right, cool. Thanks, man. I really appreciate you. I lucked out. This guy, uh, Tom, that owns the place, he really, could, I think he could sense that I, I needed a place to stay and there's not many options. And this is the only one unit that they have in the motel 